Hi, everybody. My name is Lynn Serafin. I'm a genealog genealogist, that's hard to say, at TrentinoGenealogy.com. And today is Philo Friday. It is Friday, the 26th of June, 2020. Um, I'm talking, speaking with you from Bedford, England, where it's really, we're going through a heat wave here, uh, which is about 31 degrees Celsius, which is around 87 Fahrenheit, which is pretty hot for England, I have to tell you. <laughs> and a lot of people would be going, oh, they can't bear the heat. But if you hear a whoosh in the background, it's because I have all the fans on because it's quite warm. Anyway, also, if you hear my throat, uh, is quite raspy. I um, I actually don't know what's going on. I went to the doctor and they um, she found some noise in my lung. And I don't know if it's from the residual of what might have been COVID back in April, but and may not have because nobody had a test to give me back then. But whatever it is, I can get into these coughing fits. Um, I don't have the virus now, but I can't seem to shake this. So I'm on some new meds and we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, I have to have other tests, but please bear with me uh, with my raspy voice. And also if I happen to break into coughing, I did take some herbal cough syrup. So hopefully uh, that'll be all right. So please forgive me if I, if I do break into uh, some coughing. So, all right. So today, let me, uh, here, I just have to look at my notes. I better put my glasses on. Sorry, I hate putting them on because they reflect, but at any rate, today I have called this session, this podcast, you know you are cousins if, dot, 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 dot. Now, the premise of this is that sometimes when we do genealogy, we meet other people who have the same surname in their tree. This happens an awful lot. I see it in the group a lot. They have the same surname in the tree as, as one of the surnames that you have, and, you, and maybe from the same parish. And you wonder, oh, are we related? Well, the answer is probably, but do you know? How do you know? And uh, sometimes you can't quite know very obviously because of maybe the families go back way, 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 way far and you don't find a connection. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Louise Gennetti and I, I have Gennetti in my family, but they're very far back in time. They're like in the 1500s. And then they left that area, left Castelfondo and moved to where my father came from in Val Giudicari. And so far, Louise and I haven't found the connection to see whether our families are actually related. So we we are spiritual cousins. <laughs> we assume we're cousins of some kind, but we haven't found the verified proof of it yet. So this is what this session is about. You know your cousins if. And the reason uh, why I'm calling it this is that there are certain families in Trentino, and of course I can't mention them all. Uh, in this session, I'll only be able to mention a few of them who came from outside the province. And we know that when they came into the province, they were there was either one man carrying that surname who settled there, usually to marry a, marry a woman who lived there, often that was the case, or maybe a couple of brothers who moved into the area. And so, of course, then their brothers, so their, their father is, uh, and their parents are your ancestors. So, in those cases, when we know that a certain family migrated into the province from somewhere else, um, you know that if you have the same surname as someone else in the place where they had migrated to or, or migrated after that, um, that's your cousins, even if you can't prove it with documentation. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm not gonna be talking about um, branches of families that moved within the province because that's more complicated and I'll do that in another session. But I wanted to kind of whet your appetite with a few families that I know of. I, and that, again, this is, is not going to be all of them, but it's going to be a few of the ones that I've worked with in various uh, uh, projects. So I'll let you know about so Are any of you commenting on that? Yes. Hi, Louise. Um, so if any of you have any ideas about those, or if any of you have, uh, as you're listening, if you have families that you know came from outside the province, uh, write them down. I mean, wait until I say some, because maybe I'll be talking about that family, but write them down and tell me where you think they came from and or what you know about them, because I'll, I'd love to research them, because you know I'm writing this book on surnames as well, which includes the history of these names. So anyways, that's the premise. So here we go. I'm going to scroll to my notes. Right. Okay. Now the first one I'm going to do, I've spoken about this surname before and it's actually, 
if any of you get Philo magazine, which isn't my magazine, it's run by Lou Brunelli, but I do write for it. Um, I write a, a genealogy article and now, or, or series, and, and now I'm uh, starting to write a series on surnames. And the first surname I did for the issue that just came out and apparently has just been shipped off to the subscribers in the United States and other places, um, is the surname I'm gonna talk about first. And it's the surname Crozina. Now, if any of you have the surname Crozina in your tree, you are related to anyone else who has it in their tree. I'm one of them. I have Crozina in my tree. So if you have Crozina in your tree, you're related to me and to each other, even if you don't know how. And this is why. The Crozina family are not originally from Trentino. They came from Padova in, Ven in uh, Veneto. They were already in nobility there. Their name uh, earlier wasn't Crozina, it was like Crozni or Crozmi, th those kinds of variations. They were already nobility. And in the 1200s, <laughs> there was an emperor, Ezzolino the third, I think, second or third. He was a tyrant. And I don't exactly know what the, um, actually, I don't at all know what the tyranny was that he put on the, on the family. But they fled, or some of them fled. And in particular, two brothers fled. And let me look at their names. It was Gerardo and somebody else. Hold on, Giovanni. Gerardo, although in those days it was spelled Z Z I A Z I R A L D O, which looks like Ziraldo, but it was probably pronounced more like Giraldo back then, which is the same name as Gerardo. Okay? So Giraldo and Giovanni Crozina left part of a and they spent some time down in in uh, Vicenza, but then eventually settled in Val Giudicari in a place called Valdido. Now they became really the lords of <laughs> Valdido there. They started a, a, a church there called Santa Giustina, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. They uh, and they they really were the patrons of the whole area, and they were very very formidable people. Now, um, the fact is, anybody who's oh wait no I'm preempting myself. One branch of the family moved to Trento at some point. And this was a, a doctor named uh, Tommaso Grosina. <coughs> Sorry, I told you I was going to call. And Tommaso uh, got higher nobility. I can't remember what it is now. I wrote it, I wrote it all down in my book, and I also put it in the surname of the day once before. But uh, he was, I believe, was an imperial nobility at that point. That family became very elevated, and they actually married into Austrian nobility and all these things. And some of them migrated even into Austria. And there's a huge family tree up there is painted on a painting in the Museo de Bon, bon Consiglio. It's a very fascinating. Now, the thing is, it, it focuses on that branch, which isn't my branch, because my branch stayed in Balbido. Now, there was still nobility, but they weren't as high nobility as the ones who wa went off to uh, Trento. Nonetheless, all the Crozinas, whether they are from Balbido or uh, from the Trento branch or from the branches that went later into Austria, they're all related. They're all cousins because they all came from these two brothers, Geraldo and Giovanni, who left Padova around in the 1200s sometime and settled in Val Giudicari. So there you go. Now, they, uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, which is interesting, a kind of a trivia thing about them, the church is, uh, uh, in Balbido is called Santa Giustina. Now, Santa Giustina is the uh, one of the patrons of the city of Padova. So they brought the patron saint with them. This is something that people do. It's very common. The other thing is in the church, you'll also see a statue of uh, San, San Antonio de Padova, who's another patron saint of Padova. And what's even more interesting about that is that at the time they left Padova, he, St. Anthony, San, San Antonio, was probably alive. So they probably knew him. He was probably a friend or something, or at least a priest that they uh, that they that they saw. So I think all of that is very interesting. So anyway, if you have the name Crozina in your family, you are related to everyone else who has it in their family. So let's see who's commenting on what. Crozina, Daniele, okay, you're talking about all these people. Okay, great. So that's one. So the next family I wanted to mention, we're gonna go all the way up to a different part of the province. Hold on, I'm scrolling through my notes because I've said all of that already, is the Zini family, 
from Cavareno. Now, Cavareno is, uh, it's in the, par well, it's an independent parish now, but it's really been, historically, it's been part of the parish of Sarnonico in Veldinon for a long, long time. It's up in the northern part of the province. Z-I-N-I, and I'm going to uh, <laughs> tell you, please, I have had many people confuse three surnames that in English are hard for English speakers to make sense of, but in Italian, they're very clear. Zini, the one I'm talking about here is Z-I-N-I or Z-I-N-I. That's it. Two I's. I-I. Zini. Okay. There's another name, Zini, Z-E-N-I, Z-E-N-I, which is Zini, not Zini, just because it has an E. You don't say Zini. It's Zini. And there's another name, Zani, Z-A-N-I, which is a, uh, not A. <laughs> so there, and I've had many new clients come to me and confuse these names and think they're the same name. They're not. They don't have the same history. They're not from the same places. And I am only talking about Zini right now, Z-I-N-I. -I. And they live, they're historically from Cabareno, but they're not originally from there. Now they came from a place way further away. <laughs> they came from Moravia if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which, you know, when I first heard it, I said, where the heck is that? Well, it's southeast of Prague. It's in the present day Czech Republic. Yes. So and that was part of the Austrian Empire at that time, or the Holy Roman Empire at that time. It wasn't the Austrian Empire, then it was Holy Roman Empire. They moved to from Moravia. I don't exactly know the reasons why. I have to research them a bit more. But they moved from Moravia into Cavareno sometime in the 1400s. So when you look at the records, it looks like they've been there forever. And uh, I've, I've done a lot of research with this family because I have a, quite a few clients who, who have this name in their tree. They are a noble family and also they uh, achieved imperial nobility in the, I think it was in the 15 or early 1600s. Again, I have it all written down. But the point is because we know this family migrated from outside and came into the province at a specific time everybody with this surname in their tree is a cousin to everybody else i don't have it in my tree not yet i would love to because i love that family because i've been doing so much research for them so if you've got zini z-i-n-i -I, from cavarino in your tree and you know someone else who has it in their tree you're their cousin it may be like 15th cousin but you're their cousin because that family came from moravia sometime in the 1400s and settled in Cavareno. Let's see if anybody else is making any call. I see lots of people. Hi, 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 hi. Um, yes, you have Zini. Very interesting. Yes, Tony. Yes, so it, you can see <laughs> a lot of people have Zini. They were very prolific. Actually, when I went to, with the Jean Pankari couple, when was it? It wasn't last summer, was it? Or was it the summer before? I can't remember, but we went to Cavareno. Uh, I think it was last summer. It, it, we went to Cavareno and I visited their little old church there. It, it's this tiny, really funky ruins of a church, and I found it fascinating. And this, it, it had a lot to do with the Zini family. It's a very cute place. So, okie dokie. So, who is the next family that I was going to talk about? Let me just go here. Right, okay. Now, here's a name that's a little less common, perhaps. It's the name Brenna. Brenna, B-R-E-N-A or B-R-E-N-N-A. They're the same name, doesn't matter which way you spell it. They basically live in uh, in Valjudicari, in, in, in Bleggio, mainly in where, which village? I think they're in Cabrasto. I have to look it up. Sorry, I have to look at my notes because I don't actually remember. But they came from Milano or from the province of Milano. And we know exactly when they came, because this is something that I researched for a client. And uh, the first person who came in, came in really much more recently. He came in sometime in the end of the 1700s. That's not that long ago. So they, so they moved from Milano, or somewhere around there in that province in Lombardia, into Val Giudicari in the late 1700s. And everybody, everybody, who has that surname in Trentino is descended from that person. His name is Carlo Giuseppe Brenna. His father's name was Antonio. And so if you want to research them, you can go back. If you can find the records, I don't know exactly what parish he came from, but anybody with that surname 
is a cousin and more recent cousin because it's from the 1700s. Uh, another surname that I haven't researched, but I found online because there's a, a, an historian named, um, yes, what is his name now? Aniolapi? La yes, Aniolapi. He's researched his family and if you've got Lapi, L-A-P-P-I in your name, in, in your name, they are also, you're also all related because they're all descended from a family who also came from near the, in the diocese of uh, Vicenza. They came from Isola de Malo, which is uh, also known as Isola Vig uh, Vicentina, and that's in Vicenza, in Veneto. And he came in, um, again, in the 1700s and settled in around the Stenico area. Uh, there was another branch, but apparently that the Stenico one is the one that took hold. So if you've got Lapi in your name, you're related to everybody else with that surname because we know when they came in. Two others that I'll talk about really briefly. One is Gian uh yes, Brenna or Brenna, both. Uh, uh, it could be either. It could be either. There, there's some people I know in Bleggio say, no, ours is with two ends, and the others say, oh, ours with its one end. I think that's almost like a soprenome that people use to distinguish their different branches, but they are the same name. They're descended from the same people. Okay? So, and, it, they, and if you look at the records, it varies whether it's one or two ends, and you could kind of make a choice. So, I, I use two in my tree just so I can find everybody, but some people say, no, ours is with one end, but really, that is almost like a soprenome, just to distinguish them from the other branch. Okay? One other name that uh, Gian Bellotti actually brought up earlier this week uh, is Maisetti. Now, this name has died out, but if some of you have done some research and you happen to be uh, doing research in Val Giudicari, um, this family came from, let me look at the town, Vezzo Dolio in Val Canonica, uh, Camonica, rather, in Brescia. Now you can see when people come in from other places, usually it's from somewhere in Veneto or Lombardia. However, of course, the Zini came from way up in Moravia, but a lot of times they come from one of these other two uh, regions. So the Maisetti were originally, their original surname were Fumadri. And when they came into uh, Val Giudicari, they changed their name to Maisetti. The name died out. But if you have researched your family back into the, say the um, 1700s or something, you may still see the name. The person who came in, his name was Martino. He was born around 1530, and he's the one who moved into the province, or actually it was his son, uh, Giovanni Pietro, who moved into the province of Trentino. So if you, uh, in the late, uh, or the mid 1500s, so if you have my setti, M-A-I-S-E-T-T-I, -T -T if you have my setti in your tree from the Judicari, your cousins, because we know the person who brought it to the to the uh, province. The last name that I'm going to mention on this broadcast, because next time I'll, I'll talk about others who migrated from within the province, is Finice. If any of you have this surname, and it's the family uh, who settled in Rango, they're still there. It's quite a popular name. It's F-E-N-I-C-E. -E. Uh, sometimes you'll see it with an I at the end, but it's more properly spelled with an E at the end. It means Phoenix. Um, this family are also from uh, Brescia. The, uh, the founder, the patriarch of this family is a, is a man named Benvenuto Fenice. He moved into the Giudicari. And also a lot of the, a lot of the people who came in from Brescia settled in the Giudicari in that area because it's close. <laughs> it's not that far away. Um, he settled there sometime. Let me again look at the date again. Okay, he was born around 1540, I estimate, and he was already in Rango by uh, around 1560 or so. So, or maybe he was born a little earlier than that. But now, what's interesting about him is we know from other evidence that he's in all the records. He's called Magistri, Magistri, and he's referred to in one record. I have to try to find it again, as a potter, a ceramicist. So, um, and in Rango, if any of you know Tommaso Iori, who runs the Scuola, uh, the Scuola de Rango, the this history museum, Museo de Scuola in Rango, so the school museum, he's put up little exhibits talking about the Finice, saying they have found evidence that there was a medieval kiln 
in Rango. So back in the 1500s, there was a kiln and there's lots of pot, pot, pottery sheds there, medieval pottery, probably made by one of your ancestors, if you have this name. So they were manufactured by Benvenuto Fenice and his sons, or son, I think there was only one. And so it was the family kiln. And so if you have that surname in your tree, Fenice from Rango, you are cousins to everybody else, and that includes me in this case. And my seti also I have, and so does John, and so does John have an each other. So John and I have a lot of parallel lines. So anyways, those are just, I was going to talk about three, but I thought if I did it short, I could give you a few more. Uh, that's, uh, I think, what, six, six families uh, who all came from outside the region. I know there are others. I'll look into them another day, but I thought you might find those interesting because now, if you know anybody with those surnames in the places that I mentioned, you're their cousins. So go meet your new cousins <laughs> and uh, hope that you start to connect with each other. Uh, even if you don't have documentation, you know your cousins because you know who the ancestor, who the patriarch of the family was. Now, next time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look at some branches of families who migrated from one part of the province to another. So like maybe the, a family surname started out in one place and then they moved to another place. And so that also can help us determine if you are related to everybody else in that new place who to where they migrated. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. Now, there's so many of those. I won't be able to do more than just a few, but I think you'll find it quite interesting. OK, everybody. Um, see you next time and see you in the group. Take care. Bye-bye.